Autolite and its 98,000 dealers bring you Mr. Victor Mature in tonight's presentation of Suspense. Tonight, Autolite presents the story of a cross-country train trip during which a police officer finds himself torn between his assignment and his personal feelings for the girl in car 32, our star, Mr. Victor Mature. This is Harlow Wilcox. Would you like to be responsible for your local church or hospital getting a big share of $100,000 in cash? Well, that's the total which will go to the recognized charities chosen by the 25 persons selected in the Autolite family charity drawing. The top award is $50,000, with 24 others from $1,000 to $20,000 each. To enter is as simple as signing your name and address, and that's all you do. Now, it's our privilege to have you hear what the head of one of America's finest organizations says about this great event. Here is Mr. E. Roland Harriman, chairman of the American Red Cross. Thank you. The spirit of the Autolite family charity plan is a fine example of the simple slogan of the Red Cross, people helping people. Just a slight effort to register may qualify you to be the benefactor of thousands who look to you for assistance through your Red Cross. Fill out a registration form at any of the following Autolite family car dealers. DeSoto, Hudson, Plymouth, Studebaker, Dodge, Willis, Nash, Packard, Kaiser, or Chrysler. Remember, there's no obligation, but your favorite recognized charity may thank you for a large part of $100,000. Sign up tomorrow. And now, Autolite presents Transcribe, The Girl in Car 32, starring Mr. Victor Mature. Hoping once again to keep you in suspense. Hey, Mahoney. Buker. I can see better from here. How do you feel, kiddo? Okay, I guess. Flying out here from New York last night and taking a train back this morning. Isn't my idea of fun, though. Yeah, well, we'll show you L.A. next trip, baby. We got about uh, two minutes. You better tell me what this is all about. We got a dame who's been living with Fritzy Hollister's sweetheart for the past couple of weeks. You know Fritzy. Yeah. He's got a trunk full of hot jewelry I'd like to get my hands on. Well, this is your chance, Mahoney. Now, we figure Fritzy has ducked the old girlfriend and made a connection with a new one. And her name is Genevieve Josephine Johnson. Now, here's the angle. She's heading east on this streamliner today, probably to wherever Fritzy's hanging around. It's a sit-up train. You're right across the aisle from her. So, you work yourself in with her. And when you get a chance, check her luggage to find out where she's going to meet him. I know. Don't look so sad, kiddo. It's an easy job sitting on a train with a doll. Hey, hey. Hmm? Oh, that one? Yeah. Genevieve Josephine Johnson. Uh Uh-huh. In the flesh. I don't know. And I don't mean to argue with you. But to me, she just isn't the type for Fritzy Hollister. Oh, stop your kidding. No job, for one thing. No family or background we can check. An apartment in Hollywood that rented for four fifty a month. Part of the act, huh? Everything else set? All set. All good. Well, so long, kid. So long. All good. Good. Have a nice trip. Bye, Charlie. Bye. Bye. Porter. Uh, yes, sir. Carry your bag, sir. The bag's okay. My ticket says uh, thirty-two. Uh, car 32. Yes, sir. Uh, that'd be the next car down, sir. Uh, you can board right here. All reserved seats. Yes, sir. Thanks. Pardon me. Pardon me, please. Oh, excuse me. Oh, I'm sorry, miss. It's all right. Careful now. Don't look at her sitting there in her little brown suit and white blouse. 
Just take off your hat, lay it on the seat, pick up your magazine. But don't look over there. No, no. Don't reach over and offer to light a cigarette. She can do it. She's okay. Don't lean across the aisle. Got plenty of time. It'll happen soon enough. So just relax and just let it happen. You know what you're doing, boy. That old Mahoney technique. Take your seat for a minute. I'm on my way to the club car. It's a long walk. Huh? <laughs> oh. Well, that's one way to sit down. Huh? <laughs> now, what's the matter? Ain't I even human? Ain't I even looked at, huh? Hey. Hey, you. Well, Miss Hi Hat. Hey. Please go wherever you were going and leave me alone. Ah, come on, little lady. Have a nice, friendly drink with old Frank Tires. How about it, huh? Pardon me, uh, miss. <coughs> hey, you. Hey, we... Just... Now, just what's the idea, Buster? What are you doing in this car, anyway? And what are you looking for? A good punch in the mouth, maybe? Oh, no, no, no he's, was... he's... He's bothering me, yes, but I, I don't want any trouble about this. Oh, boy, it's a hassle about pal. I get off in a couple of minutes to send for doing. I don't mean to insult anybody. All I thought to... Yeah, all you thought... Then who asked you to sit down with the young lady, huh? Who wanted you? Why please, I ought to... Please, it's all right. It's all... It's perfectly all right. Just... Just don't... Don't hit him, Morgan. Where's your car? It's back there. Come on, I'll take you. No, no, I just, said, come on. Just a minute. Come on. Don't... Don't Get hurt moving. him. Get moving. Don't hurt him. It's all right, miss. Don't you worry. Come on. Move <laughs> on. Hey, now, wait just a minute. You know who I am? Yeah, I know who you are. Okay, you can let go now. Huh. So you're bright eyes, huh? You can leave off the bright eyes. Yeah, sure, sure. It's your day to be touchy, huh? <laughs> you look pretty good back in there. You see her wring her hands and wink them big brown eyes? Where'll you be? Compartment A next door, whenever you need me. Well, she's waiting for you, Mr. Hero. You know, I wish I had poked you, Dane. You're a nice big New York copper, Mahoney. You got the jaw and you got the shoulders. I heard all about you. You look like you could do it. And I'm just a beefy blot working out of L.A. Central Division, but I could whip you, boy. So easy. I'd better get back. Yeah, sure. I envy you, bright eyes. You two will make a nice couple. He won't bother you again, miss. Hmm? Oh, you you didn't hurt him or anything like that, did you? Oh, no, no, no. I just took him back to his car and asked him to stay away from you. Oh, it was embarrassing. This is the first time anything like this has happened to me. I'm glad you helped out. Thank you very much. There's no trouble at all. Oh, um... What? I'm out of matches. Oh, well, I can help you there. I, I have some in my purse, I think... Yes. Here you are. Thanks. Would you, uh, grab a cigarette? Well, uh, thank you, yes. Why don't you sit down? Mm. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> what? My goodness, it was kind of funny, wasn't it? He he was so tight. <laughs> yes. Yes, it was funny. The old razzmatazz. Don't ask, just answer. Don't laugh, but smile a lot. Let her see your teeth. Don't move close, but let her know that you've got shoulders there, boy. And the other trick. Keep your hands open, spread out. Talk. Then stop, look a while. Watch the orange groves go by. Watch the houses go by. Watch your life go by. What? 
Oh, my goodness. You must have money in the bank. You're talking to yourself. What's the trouble? <laughs> I think I'll stop looking around out there. It's beginning to worry me. Too big or too empty or too something, I don't know. You, uh, like it, do you? Oh, it's lovely. The most beautiful country I've ever seen in my life. It's breathtaking. Oh, and, uh, people call me Jenny. Jenny for Genevieve, huh? Yep. Jenny Johnson. Well, they call me Mahoney. And, uh, some other things sometimes. My name's Harry. Oh, well, where are you heading anyway? All the way east? All the way and more. Bayside Hills, Pennsylvania. I work in a dentist's office there. Now, that's funny. Maybe the suntan threw me. You know, I kind of thought you lived in L.A. And mostly that you didn't work. Oh, oh dear. Well, I, I did live there for three weeks in a simply marvelous garden apartment in Hollywood. Right off Sunset Boulevard. Mm -hmm. They had a heated pool. Oh, it was wonderful. Say, it sounds expensive. Oh, it was. Terribly. But I shared it with a couple of other girls off oh. and on. Advertising the papers, you know. Only... Only? Well, go on. Something happened? Only, maybe I I'm funny in some ways. Maybe I'm old-fashioned. But some things I just... Well, there's not much point of going into that part. I get it. You got stuck with a cute little blonde who always wore your clothes or something. Cute? Oh, not for my money, thank you. What happened, anyway, was that she got out last week after one of her parties when I said what I had to say. She got out pretty darn fast, believe you me. I... My goodness, did I say something? Why are you staring at me? Who? What? Oh, oh staring at you. Well, I, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. Oh, now that's all right. My goodness, for some reason it seemed like you were looking at me for the first time. Ah, I seen you go to dinner with her. You ain't doing okay, Bright Eyes. Yeah, but it doesn't add up. Too homespun for this trick. Huh? Now, what's she done? Throwing up a smoke screen? That homespun stuff's all part of the act. She's Fritzy's girlfriend, all right? Remember, you're the operator, boy, not her. She's going to a place in Pennsylvania. Uh, she tell you she's got a little old mother and a little old father waiting for her back home? Yeah. Yeah, it's a great act. She's just a better actor than you are. Now, there's nothing in her luggage on the baggage car, but Fritzy must have slipped her some little drink in her. Hey. It took a lot of fixing to set this up, getting you the space across from her and all. So keep your eyes on her, Bright Eyes. That's what you're here for. Keep on her. Hi. Did you get your glass of water? Yeah. Well, it seems to be getting pretty late, doesn't it? Hadn't we better call it a night? Oh, uh... What? Why... Well, um, couldn't we sit here another half hour and just uh, talk about things? Why, why couldn't we? Oh, I, I suppose we could. That, that is, if, if you don't expect... Oh, I, I, I don't expect anything. Well, uh, we'll talk about what? Well, we'll, we'll talk about you. Oh, no, we won't. There's nothing to talk about. That isn't the way I heard it. Oh, you, you didn't hear anything about me. You'd be surprised, sister. What? Nothing. I... I don't think you want to talk very much, do you? No, I... I want to find out Harry, something... Harry, wrong. Harry, no. Well, anything the matter? No, no, please. I don't care for that sort of thing. You promised. You said... Oh. Please. Oh, oh, oh well, I... <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, I just... That's quite all right, First minute it got dark, though, you had to try it. I told you, I'm sorry. I... Forget it. You know, I'd, I'd like to tell you something. I'm not that kind of a guy. I never was. I've had so much of that stupid messing around. Oh, while. so much of it? I see. Well, I haven't. And I don't think I'm sorry, either. I want it to mean something with me, and, and it won't be stupid. But that's silly, isn't it? 
No, it isn't. It's awfully late, really it is. I'll see you tomorrow. It's about time. Why didn't you come back last night? I didn't feel like it. Did you get anything else done? I went through her suitcase when she was asleep. Yeah? Dresses and things, shoes, bathrobes, some stuff for underneath, that's all. The dress cost maybe $15 at the outside. It was the most expensive item there. And that suit that she's wearing went for 40 bucks at a sale, you know that. All right, so she's smart enough not only to act it, but to have the right props. This isn't Fritzy's girlfriend. He wouldn't know one like this, and she wouldn't have one like him. That's the second time you've said that. How do you know? I just know. I, well, I, I found out. You're getting older, and you're getting dumber, Bright Eyes. You getting fed up? She'd never have anything to do with somebody like Fritzy. I told you that once before, hey. too. Hey, What? Fritzy. What? Just walk by outside the window carrying a suitcase. Then just die here. Get just die here. Yeah, that's him, all right. Yeah. Getting on this car. You see the little guy in the overcoat and the cigarette. You're right. It's Fritzy Hollister. Yeah, sure, I'm right. He just sat down beside Genevieve Josephine Johnson from Pennsylvania. Well, you know, look, it could be just a coincidence. So she's a nice kid, huh? Couldn't have anything to do with a bum like Fritzy, huh? Come on, now stay where you are. We'll make our play when the time comes. <laughs> Autolite is bringing you Mr. Victor Mature as star of The Girl in Car 32. Tonight's presentation in radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. That's the car for me, Harlow. You mean that new Packard that just passed, Jim? Yes, sir. That's the popular price Packard Clipper, with the power and luxury that only Packard can put into a car. And have you seen the Packard Patrician? That's the finest car ever to bear that famous Packard name. A name we're privileged to salute tonight on Suspense. Packard, an outstanding member of our worldwide Autolite family. Well, Packard is outstanding in every way. Its ruggedness and dependability have withstood the most tortuous tests that Packard engineers can devise. Packards have proved over and over that they have what it takes under every road and weather condition. Yes, sir, Harlow, when you get an Autolite-equipped Packard, you get real value. And you get a car with one of the most famous of all fine car names, Packard. Yes, and Autolite is proud of its long association with Packard and with Packard dealers everywhere. And now, Autolite brings back to our Hollywood soundstage Mr. Victor Mature in Elliot Lewis's production of The Girl in Car 32, a tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. Now use your head, bright eyes. It's no mistake, no crazy coincidence. Even if she sat there all day and hasn't talked to him once. The little bird in the blue overcoat is Fretzy Hollister. And you were trying to steal his girl. Use your head. She was fast enough and smart enough to spot you right off for what you were. And she handled you last night like a schoolboy. She couldn't warn him from the train. But she's given him a poke in the ribs or an elbow or something so he'll play it straight here. Sure. She's Fritzy's one chance. She'll work on you again, Bright Eyes. And watch that. Because you don't want to let either one of them slip off the hook. Asleep? No. Cup of water? No. Uh, I'll drink it myself. I can't sleep. Not with that strange man over there. What's so strange about him? What? Skip it. Do you feel like talking? Sure, let's talk. Why not? Sit down. Thank you. 
Well, I wonder what this stop is going to be. I'm glad you wanted to talk. But suppose you drop the rude girl routine, huh? My goodness. You're all right in the daytime, but at night you come out with the silliest things. That... Say, what do you mean by that? Big laugh. <laughs> Big laugh for you. What? For a couple of minutes last night, I was stupid enough to believe you, sister. What? Not now, though, and don't you forget it. What on earth are you talking about? I said cut the act. Well, I don't have to have anyone to talk to me like that. I think you're crazy. You must be. You must have something all twisted up in your head or you wouldn't say things like this. You... Oh, oh, darn. <laughs> I've been so thirsty all day. I think I'll get some water. Stay where you are. I'll get the water. Now, see I'll here, I... will get the water. Hi. Hi. What's the idea of leaving them together when we come in a station? I'm sick of it. It happens here or else. Now, look. Shut up. Hey. Hey, Fritzy jumped over in your seat. Yeah. And he's talking to her. Yeah, he had to sooner or later. Right now, she's telling him I'm a cop, and they'd better scram out while the scramming's good. You hit it on the head, boy. There he goes, heading for the door. He won't make it. Hey. Come on. Hey, Fritzy. What? I've been waiting for you to try something like this. Your girlfriend's pretty smart. Look out, Bright Ace. He's got a gun. No, you don't. You stay away from me. Stay away from no me. No good, Fritzy. No good. Oh. Are you okay? Yeah. Here. Hold on to it. Hey, where are you going? To get his girlfriend. I want to attend to her personally. All right, stand back. Stand back. Get out of the way. Say, what's all this? What's... Police officers, keep these people back. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I I'll do that, sir. What happened? What on earth is it? Stole that, baby. This is a pinch. What? Come on, come on. Come on, up, up on your feet. We've got Fritzy in a huddle. You're hurting me. And you're killing me with those big brown eyes. Why, you just... Pretty smart you were, only you forgot one little thing. You forgot the first rule of Broadway. Never hustle a hustler. Just who do you think you had anyway? Some clown on a train or bright eyes Mahoney? <laughs> Cut up the tears. Come on. <laughs> Now then, what's it all about, Sergeant Mahoney? We can keep the man for carrying a gun. That'll do for a starter. We've got a million charges against him. He pulled the biggest jewelry heist in the country last year. You can get some papers out here to me? Sergeant Danes is phoning Los Angeles right now. All right. Now, what about the lady? Hold her, too, for disturbing the peace if you have to. She's Fritzy's girlfriend. She'll be named accomplice. Oh, I see. Well, she sure cries a lot. I'll hold them for you. Anything else you want from me? Hey, Bright Eyes. We got a mix-up. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, you're a little mixed up, boy. That's what I mean. I've been on the phone to L.A. straightening it out for you. Fritzy's old girlfriend and that other one had the apartment together in L.A., okay? But that's all. She's not tied up with Fritzy. She never was. Why do you meet her on the train? Because Fritzy's girlfriend left an old trunk after her in the storeroom. How was this Johnson dame to know that there was a couple of hundred thousand dollars worth of stolen jewelry in the false bottom? Naturally, Fritzy wanted it back, so he found out this tomato you were bright-eyeing with was coming east, so he just grabbed a plane so he could meet her in KC. He wanted that trunk, boy. Yeah, you mentioned that. Well, sir, that's it. She's no more Fritzy's new girlfriend than I am. <laughs> you know, it's funny how things work out. The trunk's been in a hawk shop in L.A. all the time. Little Miss Muffet got rid of it to clean up the place when she moved. <laughs> What's the matter? You sick or something? I told you she wasn't Fritzy's girlfriend. I told you. Well, I got that all straightened out for you now, Bright Eyes, so you... Right out of release. Will you, Sheriff, for Jenny Johnson? Sure. Sure, I'm glad to. You know... I wanted to do just what you did ever since that fella started talking. He bothers me. <laughs> the next...
next one will be through tomorrow morning, Jenny. Thank you. It's a real nice train, streamliner and all. They have a compartment for you. Jenny, can I say anything? Can I do anything? You know, what? when I remember I was... what I was beginning to feel in my heart and what I've done to you, I just... In what? In your heart? Oh, you proved it, didn't you? Oh, Jenny, look, well, that's I'm that's so... all right, Bright Eyes. I heard them call you that. You're very clever with all women, and I'm very stupid, I suppose. I didn't even know the first rule of Broadway. But I know what I want anyway. I want you to leave me alone. I don't ever want to see you again. Jenny, Jenny, I, I, I know what I want. I found out sitting in that seat beside you. You just get away from me. The things you said to me and the way you act. Because, because what? Because you cared for me, I suppose. Because I cared for you, Jenny. You know something? I'm going to be on that train with you tomorrow morning. Yes, sir, Jenny. I'm going to be on that train with you. Suspense. Presented by Autolite. Tonight's star, Mr. Victor Mature. This is Harlow Wilcox again. Remember, you now have a good chance to do your favorite local or national recognized charity the favor of a lifetime. If you're one of the 25 persons selected in the huge Autolite family charity drawing, you can name any recognized charity you wish to receive a big share of $100,000 in cash. Those charities can be schools, hospitals, churches, the American Red Cross, or any other recognized charity. So if you're 18 years or over, visit any of the following Autolite family car showrooms. DeSoto, Hudson, Plymouth, Studebaker, Dodge, Willis, Nash, Packard, Kaiser, or Chrysler. Print your name and address on the drawing registration form and have the car dealer sign it. That's all. Nothing to buy, try, or solve. So give your favorite recognized charity a chance to share in this huge $100,000 Autolite family opportunity. Visit any Autolite family car showroom and sign up tomorrow. Next week, the story of a man who found that everything was against him. His wife distrusted him. His best friend had to give him an alibi, all because of a girl, a dead girl. It's called The Guilty Always Run. Our star, Mr. Tyrone Power. That's next week on Suspense. Suspense is transcribed and directed by Elliot Lewis, with music composed by Lucian Marwick and conducted by Lud Gluskin. The Girl in Car 32 was written for suspense by E. Jack Newman from the story by Thomas Walsh. In tonight's story, Kathy Lewis was heard as Jenny and William Conrad as Dane. Featured in the cast were Herb Butterfield, Joseph Kearns, Roy Glenn, and John Daner. Victor Mature appeared by arrangement with 20th Century Fox, producers of Prince Valiant in Technicolor and Cinescope, starring James Mason, Janet Lee, and Robert Wagner. And remember next week, Mr. Tyrone Power in The Guilty Always Run. This is the CBS Radio Network. <laughs>